It was a perfect midsummer's day in Sleepy Forest. The flowers were in full bloom, and brightly coloured butterflies flitted from petal to petal, resting now and again to bask in the soothing warmth of the sun. Fluffy bumblebees chased each other through meadows full of orange poppies and towering sunflowers. The air was scented with the peaceful aroma of rose and lavender, with an added hint of wild mint and rosemary. It was the perfect day for slowing down and taking it easy. In the garden of a cosy cottage, a family of teddy bears were doing just that. The younger teddy bears, Alfie and Zara, were lying on their tummies in the soft grass, their chins resting on their paws. They were watching a tiny ladybird expertly climb a long blade of grass. The ladybird reached the top of the blade, opened her ruby red wings, and soared elegantly towards another stalk of grass. She landed on the top of it, closed her wings, and with a little whoop of joy, she slid down the grass. The ladybird reached the ground, waved at the bears, and ran over to the first blade of grass and started the fun game all over again. The ladybird was having a wonderful time on her climbing adventure, and the teddy bears were having a wonderful time lying in the warm grass and watching her. The teddy bears' parents were also having a relaxing day. Mother Bear was reclining in a deck chair and softly looking at the freshly washed laundry on the washing line. A gentle breeze moved through the sheets and blankets, making them dance merrily. The soothing aroma of linen drifted towards Mother Bear and made her smile. She closed her eyes and listened to the sounds around her, the children giggling, a gentle breeze whispering through the trees the soft buzz of the bees and the happy sound of Father Bear whistling as he painted the garden fence. She let out a long, contented sigh. On the other side of the garden, Father Bear had just finished painting the last fence panel. He loved painting and found it a very restful activity. He stood back and looked at the fence to make sure he hadn't missed a spot. His attention went to the apple trees near the fence where the sun-kissed apples dangled like jewels on the branches. Some of them were ripe for picking and Father Bear knew they would be delicious. Seeing the scrumptious apples gave him an idea. He smiled to himself. This was the perfect day for such an outing. He put the lid on the paint tin and popped his brush into a tub of liquid to clean it. He jogged lightly over to Mother Bear and knelt at her side. He laid his paw over hers. Mother Bear opened her eyes and smiled at her husband. Father Bear said, Isn't this a beautiful day? Shall we go on a picnic? Mother Bear's face lit up in delight and she said, You must have been reading my mind because I was thinking the same thing. You tell the children and I'll get the picnic hamper ready. With a spring in her step, Mother Bear headed into the cottage. Father Bear went over to the children and lay on his tummy next to them. He watched the ladybird's climbing antics for a moment and said he wished he could climb a blade of grass. His children chuckled. Father Bear said, It's such a lovely day that your mother and I have decided to have a family picnic. 
As soon as he said the word picnic, the little teddy bears leapt to their feet and jumped up and down in joy. Zara asked if she could take her book about dancing ponies with her, her dragon colouring in book, and her trumpet. Father Bear wasn't sure why Zoe needed her trumpet, but he said yes anyway. Alfie asked if he could bring his skipping rope, his toy robot, and his pyjamas with the llamas on them. Father Bear wasn't sure why Alfie needed his pyjamas, but he said yes anyway. The children raced into the cottage and began filling their backpacks with everything they would need for the picnic. Father Bear went into the kitchen and helped Mother Bear with the picnic hamper. Together, they made a pile of honey sandwiches using slices of soft bread. They chopped vegetables into chunks and made delicious dips to go with them. Mother and Father Bear went into the garden and collected plump raspberries and blackberries from the hedgerows. Father Bear remembered the apple trees and picked a dozen ripe apples. Bottles were filled to the brim with cold water and ice cubes popped inside to keep the water extra cold. Everything went into the picnic hamper. When it was full, Father Bear closed the hamper and gave it a satisfied tap. Zara and Alfie rushed into the kitchen with their backpacks in place and hats on their heads. They asked if it was time to go on the picnic. Father Bear picked up the hamper and said yes, it was time to go. Mother Bear didn't say anything. She was looking at the hamper with a puzzled look on her face. Father Bear asked if something was bothering her. I'm not sure, Mother Bear replied. I've got a feeling that I've forgotten something, but I can't think what. She shook her head and said it couldn't be anything important, and they had packed plenty of food and drink. The teddy bears left their cottage and set off on their picnic. Zara skipped along the forest path with her brother. She looked over her shoulder and asked, Where are we going to have our picnic? In the middle of the meadow or at the side of the river? I want to go to the park. They've got lots of picnic tables there, Alfie said. Or... Maybe the big field, where there's lots of room to run around. Mother Bear considered their suggestions and said they all sounded good and she couldn't decide which one to pick. The children couldn't either. She suggested they kept on walking and see how they felt further along the path. The children nodded and continued skipping along. Rays of sunlight slanted through the trees and cast flickering shadows across the path. Warm summer breezes flowed over the bears and gently ruffled their fur. Crickets chirped and bumblebees buzzed. Birds tweeted happily to each other from the treetops. The teddy bears carried on walking. Soon, they came to the home of one of their friends, a fluffy white rabbit who was sitting outside her burrow. Her bunnies were playing in the grass nearby. The rabbit waved to the bears and asked where they were going. On a picnic, Father Bear replied. What a great idea, the rabbit said. It's the perfect day for such a lovely outing. I love sitting on a picnic blanket and eating food in the fresh air. There's nothing like it. Mother Bear put her paw on her forehead. A picnic blanket. I've forgotten to bring a blanket. She shrugged. Well, there's
there's nothing we can do about that now. Our cottage is too far away for us to go back for one. I suppose we can sit on the grass instead. The white rabbit said they must have a picnic blanket and they could borrow hers. It was enormous and the bears would easily fit on it with room to spare. Mother Bear said that was a very kind offer. And yes, please, they would love to borrow the blanket. She had an idea and shared a look with Father Bear to see if he was thinking the same thing. He was because he said, Why don't you and your children join us on our picnic? We've got plenty of food. The rabbit beamed in delight. She collected her children and took them into the burrow to collect the picnic blanket and some toys for her children. The rabbit family jumped back out a minute later. The bunnies had little backpacks with them and their mother had an enormous blanket tucked under her arm. Father Bear took the blanket and placed it on top of the hamper. The little bunnies waved to Zara and Alfie and hopped over to them. The white rabbit said, I don't know what's in their bags, but I did see some pyjamas going in there. Father Bear laughed and said Alfie had packed his pyjamas too. The teddy bears continued on walking through the sunlit forest with their rabbit friends at their side. Further along, they came across another friend. This time it was a squirrel who lived in a treehouse. When he saw the teddy bears and the rabbits, the squirrel ran down the tree and said hello to them. He asked where they were going. Father Bear told him about their picnic plans. The squirrel grinned and said he loved picnic food especially the desserts. He rubbed his tummy and said his favourite dessert was pecan pie topped with freshly whipped blueberry cream. Mother Bear put her paw on her forehead and said, Desserts! I forgot to pack some desserts. The squirrel said he'd made some pecan pies that very morning. He had plenty to spare and asked if they would like some. He had also whipped up some blueberry cream and they could have some of that too. The bears and the rabbits said they would love that. Thank you. The squirrel scampered up the tree and disappeared into his house. Mother Bear shared a look with Father Bear. He nodded and smiled at her. When the kind squirrel returned with a couple of pies and a jug of freshly whipped cream, the bears asked him to join their picnic. Father Bear said, Bring your twin brother too. The squirrel broke into a huge smile and thanked them. Back up the tree he went and returned this time with his twin brother. His twin brother was carrying a guitar. The teddy bears, rabbits and squirrels continued on their journey along the path. They felt very peaceful and happy. The sun shone warmly on the travelling animals. The fresh air was scented with pine trees and wild herbs. Along the way, they met other animals who offered them food, drink and other items perfect for a picnic on a sunny day. A fox gave them chocolate chip cookies, popping candy cookies and banana bread still warm from the oven. A woodpecker gave them bowls of freshly picked fruit, including scrumptious strawberries and plump plums. He also offered them a jar of pickled gherkins, 
which caused Father Bear's face to light up. He loved pickled gherkins. A couple of chipmunks offered to lend them a selection of bat and ball games. When the animals couldn't decide which ones to borrow, the chipmunk said they could have them all. And an owl gave the animals some board games and puzzle books. Mother and father invited all the kind animals to join their picnic. And everyone they asked said yes. More picnic blankets were collected and some folding chairs, too. Onwards, the party of picnickers travelled. Someone started to sing some cheerful songs, and everyone joined in. The squirrel's twin brother played his guitar, and Zara blew on her trumpet. As the happy friends walked along, A family of deer stepped out of the trees and asked where everyone was going. When Father Bear said they were going on a picnic, the biggest deer asked where they were going to have the picnic. Father Bear looked at Mother Bear. She said they hadn't decided on a place yet. The deer said, If I may offer a suggestion... The beach is always a wonderful place to have a picnic. The young ones can play games in the sand or paddle in the ocean. And others can relax in chairs and maybe read a book or do a crossword puzzle. The bears liked the idea of that and asked the other animals what they thought. They all agreed. The beach was the ideal location for their picnic. The deer family were invited to join the picnic too. The deer happily accepted the invitation and brought with them beach games and some more food, including delicious ice cream, which was eaten on the last part of the journey. The picnic procession wound through the trees and towards the beach. Soon, the animals heard the soothing sound of the ocean lapping at the shore. They rounded a bend in the path, and the beach came into view. The golden sand stretched out on either side. A few animals were lying on blankets and enjoying the gentle heat of the sun. The sun glinted off the vast blue ocean, and seagulls dipped and soared over the water. The teddy bears led the way onto the beach and found the perfect spot to have their picnic. Blankets were laid out and chairs set up. The delicious food was put on the blankets and cold drinks were poured for everyone. When all the food was ready, the animals sat down and tucked into the delicious feast. One of the bunnies said the food tasted even better when it was eaten outside. Everyone agreed. As the animals ate their food, They gazed at the gentle waves and watched as the water washed gently upon the shore. The peaceful sound of the waves mingled with the soft chatter coming from the animals. Everyone said it was the perfect day for a picnic, and sharing it with friends made it extra special. The youngest animals said they'd had enough to eat and asked if they could dip their toes in the ocean. Father Bear said he would take them. He led the children down to the water's edge and kept a watchful eye on the little ones as they let the warm water trickle over their feet. Some of them decided to play a game with the ocean and jumped out of the way as the water came closer. 
They giggled in delight every time the wave missed touching their toes. Back at the picnic area, some of the animals decided to set up games on the beach and use the bats and balls that the chipmunks had brought with them. The young animals returned from the water's edge and asked if they could make sandcastles. Buckets and spades were produced, and the little animals became absorbed in their creations. Alfie made a sandcastle and proudly placed his toy robot on the top of it. More games were played on the beach, and everyone joined in. Running around made the animals hungry, and the rest of the picnic food was eaten. With full tummies, the animals rested on the various blankets and chairs and gazed once more at the gentle waves of the ocean washing up on the shore. The sun began to move towards the horizon and shades of pale orange appeared in the sky. Mother Bear noticed that a couple of the younger children were yawning. She spoke to Father Bear and asked if they should head home soon before the young ones fall asleep. Father Bear said it was such a lovely day and watching the sunset by the beach would be a wonderful way to end it. With a twinkle in his kind eyes, he added that if any little ones fell asleep, he would carry them home. The sky turned from orange to dusky pink. The sun moved closer towards the horizon and sent the last of its rays dancing across the undulating waves of the ocean. Some of the animals began to play restful songs on the instruments they had brought with them. Mrs. Bear asked her husband to sing one of his lullabies. He had a lovely, deep voice, and whenever he sang to Zara and Alfie, they would fall asleep in minutes. Father Bear chuckled and said he'd be happy to sing but if all the young ones fell asleep, he might need help carrying them home. Mother Bear smiled and said she would help him, and so would the others. Father Bear cleared his throat and began to sing. His wonderfully deep voice carried across the beach, and those that heard it stopped what they were doing and smiled. The picnic animals listened to the peaceful tones coming from Father Bear, and just as he suspected, some of the younger ones began to fall asleep. Father Bear came to the end of his song and received a quiet round of applause. Zara asked if she could read her bedtime story and held up her book about the dancing ponies. Mother Bear said that was a great idea. The children who had brought pyjamas quickly changed into them and sat in front of Zara with eager looks on their little faces. Zara began her story. And just like her father, she had a soothing, calm voice. And it wasn't long before tired little eyes began to close. The sun disappeared below the horizon, and swathes of pink and purple filled the sky. One by one, the sparkling stars twinkled into view. Some of the children started to count them, but fell asleep before they reached ten. The moon appeared from behind a cloud and cast moonbeams across the dark blue ocean. 
Zara finished her story, closed her book, and yawned. Her little brother was fast asleep on the blanket in front of her. She lay next to him and closed her eyes. The older animals gazed fondly at the sleeping animals. They knew they should be heading home soon, but the beautiful sight of the evening sky was too magical to miss. Mother Bear leaned against Father Bear and said it had been a wonderful day. Father Bear agreed and suggested they stay just a little bit longer. When the animals of Sleepy Forest returned to their homes later on and settled down in their cosy beds, they dreamed of the lovely picnic they'd shared with dear friends on a beautiful sunny day in summer.